Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the art case stumbling bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I'm back for my first week of July wrap up. For this week, I noticed I was having a lot of issues with focusing on reading. Again, as I say, I am not an escapist reader, so when a lot of things that require my mental attention in real life. My way of escaping is watching TV and not reading. Which is why I think everything I finished this week has been a graphic novel. Okay, so while still on vacation, I finished a Girl Called Echo, Volume 2. She's propelled a little bit closer in time to when the Red River Valley settlement, there's a resistance. There started to kind of become a rhythm. I like this one better than the first volume. And then Volume 3, which is about the Northwest resistance, again, propelled a little bit further she has met somebody else, but kind of has uh, another relation. Right. So she has met another person from the past. And it's at this time in this book that she begins to understand who or the people that she's been meeting with, that they are showing her her family history. And we start to get to see more of the connections of what she's going back in time and seeing in present time family coming together as connections. And as she's learning about the Matisse history, her mom and her aunt are starting to learn about their Matisse ancestry as well. So she's really bringing them closer together. And then the last volume is the Road Allowance Era just continuing the Matisse people were kicked out of one area to another to another and they're being told legally you shouldn't have been there even though the Matisse people have the documentation that they're supposed to be having land. I mean they've been promised that from the Canadian government and it's just not happening. So finished this one. Like I said I was still on vacation while I finished this. And it was a nice juxtaposition between getting to meet my husband's Kiowa family members and reading about the Matisse. I know the Matisse are up in Canada and the Kiowas, their reservation is down in Oklahoma. However, the Kiowa were a nomadic band and they were in parts of Canada until they got pushed further south. So it kind of gives a nice history of what it's been like for other people as well. Um, then we came back from vacation, still couldn't really concentrate, so I uh, read volume number 10, Delicious and Dungeon. The last volume I wasn't too happy with because it felt like it was wandering away from the main story. This is everything coming more towards a head, and we're getting to the heart of the story and now we're the main characters are actually meeting up or coming up against the lunatic sorcerer is what he's called and you're coming to find out that the lunatic sorcerer is not necessarily evil but has a different motivation and getting to see in his point of view a little bit you realize, no, his motivation makes sense, but maybe he went just too extreme. So then I picked up volume one of Rat Queen's Assassin Sorcery. This is a reread for me. It's kind of like a D&D adventure campaign, but following four women who are irreverent and are set up basically to be murdered, but then they survive it, the setup and they're trying to figure out who has set them up. They do find out who has set them up, 
that there is more to the plot of the setup than what they originally thought and what the person who set them up originally thought. And then I picked up a volume number two, The Far-Reaching Tentacles of Nerbregath. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. And this follows more D, who is from a religion that worships a squid tentacle kind of creature as she's kind of confronted more with her family history and why this religion has come into pass it, it does link into the first book kind of picks up with that storyline and then goes into Dee's story so my thing keeps jumping I'm really hoping this is going to save pick up from original storyline you get to find out the bigger plot and then it segues into Dee's story which I really enjoyed so I have worked on Aestus by S.Z. Atwell this week I have gotten to the 50% mark and it felt like a book had ended and then we kept going and so I feel like I'm reading book two of the series so I've gone ahead and given it a score even though it what even though at this point I'm not done with it but I feel like I, I finished book one and I know that's not how she's actually written it but I think this is a good learning thing for me as a writer is if you're going to write a really long book if you if there ever feels a moment where it's ended either you need to or either the book needs to be structured with parts kind of like Percival Get was or it needs to be divided into two books and not really much more to say it still kind of feels like new adult YA-ish with how it is approaching everything and the plot twist we've been given I, I saw coming so I'm not sure I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that one I also have tried to pick up Ogres by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I picked this up for the Chris Finelli Awards and the Hugo Award nominations came out recently, so definitely going to be pushing through this one. This is written in second person and I didn't realize that, and so I kind of bounced off it to begin with. I was like, oh, I am not ready for this mentally, so I'm pretty sure it needs to go back to the library soon, so hopefully I'll be able to finish it this week. writing wrap up. I did not do any writing at all and that's okay. For my other media, at the cabin we were staying at we finished watching The Great British Baking Show since it was on Netflix and I don't have Netflix myself. We finished that. We watched more of The House of Dragon and probably will eventually get max so we can finish that much better than the Game of Thrones in my opinion or at least what I've seen I'll be honest I haven't seen every episode because I was trying to read the last Speckfist book but what I have seen I really like better than the original Game of Thrones and then we got home while preparing for forums again TV is my escape from reality. Watched a lot more of Crime Scene Kitchen and finished that first season and started the second one. And a change that I was sad that they did is they took away the... So wait, so in the first season, you go through this mystery cube two times where they have the hints of the... Uh, or of what was baked. And in the first season, if you won the first round you got an extra clue but you still had to bake in the second round the second season if you win that first round you're safe and you don't have to bake in the elimination bake and i'm actually really sad that they took out i liked having that mystery clue round because it was interesting to see how sometimes people misinterpreted the mystery clue 
and I like that element. It's like how sometimes you can overthink something or the mystery clue. You're like, oh, it means this. And it, they, yeah. I think my favorite word was where the clue was a triangle with three colors of pink. Tri and it was supposed to mean like a tower of macarons. And the people who looked at it said, oh, it's a ombre cake. So that's what they did. And with some macarons on it. They ended up being safe in the elimination round because they had won the first round. But that was like an interesting example of, oh, this was not what they originally thought it was going to be. So that has been the end of my first week of July. What is coming up next is I have the Choose Your Own Adventure run by Chelsea Zhao. Very excited. That starts on the 17th. This year it will be fantasy themed. And otherwise, I just plan to survive the rest of the summer. Thank you, and have a great day.